morning students in today's class you're going to learn unit 1 prose lesson the portrait of a lady by kushwan singh part 2 dear students in part 1 in a previous class we have seen about the author and a short note a short intro to the lesson today we are going to go with a vivid narration of the biography of the author kushwan singh the portrait of a lady part 2 the portrait of a lady revolves around the author's grandmother whose milk of human kindness sustained birds animals and children her unconditional love for all gives her a beauty beyond her age The author's grandma was old and wrinkled for about 20 years. The author was told that his grandma was once young and pretty. She had a husband. But the author could not bring himself to believe it as he had seen her old right from his childhood. The author could not even imagine his grandma looking young and pretty. The picture of Arthur's grandpa was hung in the drawing room above the mantelpiece he wore a big turban and loose fitting garment his long beard ran down to his chest he appeared at least 100 years old he did not look like a family man who could have had a wife and children he only appeared like an old man with many grandchildren grandma was bent with age and had been so for a long time her entire body was wrinkled crisscross she hobbled about the house that is she moved about the house one hand on her waist to balance and another hand telling the beads of a rosary you could see the picture of a rosary here which is used for counting while saying the prayer she was always found whispering some inaudible prayer in a very silent manner her silver locks were scattered on her face untidily silver locks means gray hair that is the white hair she was beautiful like the winter landscape in the mountains she was an expansion of pure white serenity breathing peace and contentment all this speaks about her pure white sari The author and his grandma were great friends. As his parents had left him under her care and went to live in the city, he spent most of his time with her. She used to wake up the author early in the morning and help him to get ready for school. She would sing morning prayers in a sing-song voice to enable the young author to remember the prayer by hearing she would feed him with a stale chapati smeared with a little butter and sugar she would fetch his wooden slate and she accompanied him to school every day she would bring a lot of stale chapatis for the village dogs back home she loved temple which was a place of worship and learning while the priest taught the children letters of al- alphabet grandma sat inside the temple reading scriptures when her reading of scriptures and the author's learning of letters got over for the day both would return home while returning home grandma would feed the dogs that is the stray dogs street dogs with stale chapatis the animals would run fight among themselves as each chapati was thrown in the village the author spent a lot of time with grandma but after moving over to the city he went to an english medium school in a bus there were no dogs grandma started feeding the sparrows grandma and the author were in the same room but the time they spent together got reduced considerably it was not like as they spent their time together in the village 
the author was happy to share the new english words he learnt and science theories like archimedes principles law of gravity and the shape of the earth this upset her she could no more help him with his lessons the new school did not teach about god or scriptures the day the author said that he was taking music lessons in school she became uncomfortably silent when the author left for university grandma was resigned to a fate to the fate or a secluded life she continued her spinning work and chanting the spinning wheel and prayer kept her busy all day she rarely spoke to humans nowadays she relaxed for half an hour in the afternoon this was the happiest time of her day as she broke the bread into small bits that is bread crumbs to feed the sparrows it was literally a bedlam of chirpings some would perch some of those sparrows perch on her leg and some on her head she never shooed them away instead there was an angelic smile on her face she relished those moments she felt it was the happiest moments the author had the opportunity to go abroad grandma came to the railway station to bid farewell she did not show any emotion or sentiment her moist lip imprint on his forehead she kissed on his forehead that made him wonder if it was her last physical contact with him after 5 years when the author returned she met him at the railway station she did not appear to be older she just hugged the author but continued telling the rosary she did not try to show interest in knowing what happened abroad in his life instead she continued the events keen interest in feeding the sparrows she fed them longer one evening grandma did not pray instead she got an old drum and started singing she sang of the homecoming of warriors everyone got anxious that grandma might strain her nerves perhaps it was her swan song grandma felt sick she ran a temperature the doctor said that it was a mild fever but grandma predicted that her end was near she did not want to waste her time talking to the family members she lay in bed telling the rosary saying the prayer before sunset her lips stopped chanting and the rosary fell from her hands the peaceful pallor on her face conveyed her soul's departure from the body she was lifted from bed she was covered with a red cloth after a few hours the body was left alone to make funeral arrangements they brought a crude stretcher to take her to the cremation ground the sun was setting grandma's room was lit with the blaze of the golden light the room where the body was kept thousands of sparrows scat scattered on the floor there was no chirping the family was sorry for the birds mom broke the bread into crumbs that is the bread crumbs the way grandma used to do and she threw it to them but not a single sparrow took notice of it when grandma's corpse was carried off they flew away quite clean kushwan sings the port of portrait of a lady in short gives a splendid pen picture of his own grandma 
who had steadfast graceful values and philosophy of life she lived and died gracefully she had demonstrated that love is the only language a deaf can hear a dumb can speak and a blind can see dear students hope this lesson inspires you a lot give the due respect to the elders and take care of them thank you children thank you